Hey, this is Nick Green, Hollywood on Trail. Hitching, how to do it, where to do it, is it free, is it safe, all this and more. In today's video, we're gonna focus specifically hitching on the Appalachian Trail. There are a few ways you can get into town from the AT. You can organize a ride with either a hostel or a shuttle driver, uh, both of which cost a little bit of money, somewhere between like 10 and $30 or so, which could be a good option if you're traveling with other people and you can split the cost. Or you can organize a ride with a trail angel and those numbers are typically readily available and you could just reach out to them directly, tell them where to meet you and they'll graciously come pick you up, usually for free. And both of those examples are sometimes necessary because you'll get to a road in the middle of nowhere, a dirt road, a gravel road, something like that. Nobody's driving by and you'll have to organize a ride to get into town. But that doesn't happen too often, so your last option and in my opinion the most fun, you could simply put your thumb up and hitch on into town. Because the Appalachian Trail runs so closely to towns and sometimes right through towns, you'll interact with a lot of commoners. And most of them are pretty familiar with uh, hitching customs. They know that hitching is a big part of the trail and they'll typically be pretty willing to help you out. Getting into town is generally a lot easier on the AT than it is on many of the other through hiking trails. There's a few reasons for that. We've already covered one, that the towns are pretty close to trails. Sometimes the trail literally just walks straight through the towns and that's kind of uh, specific to the AT. It does happen in other parts of the country as well on other trails, but that is a pretty specifically Appalachian Trail type thing. And if they're not running right through town, towns are typically only about two or three miles away. You rarely come into a situation where a town is 10 miles away. I don't think I ever saw anything over 10 miles. So you're pretty close to everything right there on trail. A lot of these towns rely heavily on the AT and its hikers for their economy. They want us to use their restaurants and their hostels and their shuttles and buy their gear stuff at their gear stores. So they're uh, more than welcoming to hikers, typically. Which kind of lends itself to the next reason why uh, these towns are pretty hitch friendly. Everybody pretty much knows about the AT. It is a very well known hike all over the world especially in the towns that they run next to. Sometimes on other long distance hikes, yeah, people will be aware of it, but it's not ingrained into their culture like it is uh, on the AT. Sometimes towns are just towns that trails run through. On the AT, these are trail towns that the trail runs through. So for the most part uh, around the AT, people are aware of the, of the trail, of the hitching culture, and they'll be willing to help you out. Now, you are dirty, smelly hiker trash with a big gross bag and you look weird and you're hairy. So how do you hitch? There's a bit of a technique to it. Most of it is pretty obvious. I like to stand on the side of the road uh, where the traffic is going in the direction I want to go. I take my pack off, I put it at my feet, I smile politely and I put my thumb up. If a car passes me by, it's okay. I simply wave and wait for the next one. Pickup trucks were always a good bet, uh, so I target them more than, say, a car full of people, obviously. Or, if I would meet somebody on trail doing a hike, I would uh, casually strike up a conversation with them and see if they were heading into town and could give me a ride. Conversely, if I was resupplying at a grocery store or something like that, I would try to politely strike a conversation with an individual, see if they happen to be heading in the direction of the trail, and ask if they could graciously give me a lift back out there. Always understandingly taking no for an answer. But more times than not, people were really excited that you were doing something pretty cool. They want to hear about you and talk to you and see where you're from and see how it's going. And uh, they would typically be pretty readily willing to, to give you a lift. Keep in mind that you may not be always traveling alone. You might be with other hikers sometimes. So that may make hitching a bit more difficult. You may have to wait for a pickup truck you can all just jump in the back of, or you might have to split into a couple of different vehicles. Uh, sometimes, I remember being with like four or five other hikers and they just let us cram all in there. We're all on top of each other, holding our packs up over our heads and it was kind of fun that way. 
but uh, that shouldn't be expected. Some uh, people typically want to you know, follow the rules at least a little bit. So you might have to reorganize yourself and figure out what to do. I was usually just a solo male hiker, so I would kind of just have to worry about myself for the most part. So bear in mind that this may not apply to a female hiker who is worried about safety or things like that, and warrantedly so. So bear in mind, if you are a female solo hiker and you don't exactly align with what I'm saying, that makes perfect sense to me. That being said, I know plenty of female solo hikers who hitched all the time and they were just fine and really enjoyed it. I know couples or hikers just happen to be traveling with a female hiker and they would sort of put the female hiker uh, up up in front kind of on display and the male hiker would kind of walk back and, and hide a little bit and the female hiker would try to hitch. They thought maybe if it seemed like uh, a little bit more unassuming and a little bit more appealing for somebody to pick them up if it wasn't like a gross, smelly, weird, hairy male hiker, I guess. She, she may have looked less intimidating or something. I, it always sounded to me that they were kind of using her as bait, so <laughs> I, didn't, I never really employed that tactic. But to each their own, if that works and you wanna do that, go for it. I also don't know if I would wanna be picked up by a person who's only targeting female solo hikers to, to pick up. That might be a weird situation. But I do have to say the people that picked me up, none of them felt threatening in the least. They were all just kind individuals who, who wanted to help out. There were a few times where I'd have to spend upwards of an hour or two just waiting for a hitch. There were no cars or there were very few and they just kept passing me by and I kind of had to wait. There were even one or two times where I just gave up and I called the shuttle service and paid the 20 bucks or whatever it was to, to get a ride into town. But those were the rare exceptions. Usually the wait time for me was about anywhere between five to 20 minutes. I've always pointed out that walking from south to north in the United States on the Appalachian Trail is like doing a big sociological experiment. While we are all American and share a common thread, there are some pretty stark differences, in my opinion, between the South and the North. I'm not talking about political or religious differences, which certainly do exist, and you might find yourself aligning with one side more than the other, and that's cool, you do you. I'm just simply talking about the fact that there are different customs in the South and the North. I found that, generally speaking, people in the South were far more willing to pick up my dirty hiker trash hitching self. This might have something to do with Southern hospitality. Maybe it had to do with the fact that in the South, things are more sparse. There's just less people and more area to cover. So they kind of just took it upon themselves to help out. They knew if they didn't do it, kind of nobody else would. All I know is that typically in the South, if I put my thumb out, I generally got a ride pretty quickly. That isn't to say that sometimes I didn't get rides in the South. It's also not to say that I didn't get rides in the North. I met some amazingly gracious Northerners who were more than willing to pick me up and, and have a great ride and, and help out in every way they could. Just generally speaking, I noticed that the South was a little bit easier. Then of course you get all the way North up into Maine and it's kind of like you're in the South again, where everybody was more than willing to help out and, and give you a ride. It's also worth noting that in some areas, it is technically prohibited or sometimes illegal to hitchhike. New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania have certain laws surrounding this. So I'm sure that also has something to do with this. I loved hitching. I thought it was a wonderful and enlightening part of the trail experience. I met awesome individuals with fascinating stories uh, that I still hold dearly today. I'm even in contact with some of them today, so that'll tell you uh, how, how great these people were. They always seemed to be really interested in what I was doing and asked probing questions and were really gracious, and I don't remember ever feeling in danger, unsafe in any way. But of course, if anything ever feels off, just simply walk away, turn down the ride, and, and go in the other direction. So that's it. That was my experience hitching on the Appalachian Trail. I would love to hear your experience hitching on the Appalachian Trail. Or if you haven't done it yet, what are some of your reservations? What are you looking forward to? Be sure to put that down in the chat. The people surrounding the Appalachian Trail truly make the experience worthwhile. Hiking and being in the wilderness is fantastic, but the added special bonus of something like the Appalachian Trail is truly the people and people driving and picking you up, bringing you into town are part of that. In any case, just remember, if you can't carry it in your pack or in your soul, you don't need it.